welcome back again to another week um, of painting. Um, I hope you like Beauty and the Beast because this week I'm going to paint um, a lovely painting which I had on my Facebook page which I sold of the, the, the little glass. Um, it's a photograph of the Beauty and the Beast kind of theme of a table with a glass on top of it and a little rose inside the glass. And kind of, uh, you can see the castle in the background, uh, that kind of thing. So I thought it might be nice. I had a lot of requests from from a lot of people to maybe do a tutorial on this. So um, yeah, I thought what I would do was I'll do a nice tutorial on this. It may not be everybody's cup of tea, but you might enjoy just watching me paint it, paint it and get a few little hints and tips as well along the way and uh, learn some little techniques. And I'll show you how easy it was to create. It looks complicated, but it's actually quite easy. Alright, so we'll focus on that this week, just for a bit of fun, what the, what, what the heck, you know, that's what it's all about, trying different things, um, go outside of our comfort zone every now and again, and just, um, you know, push yourself that little bit. So let's try a little, nice little Beauty and the Beast team this week, alright, I hope you enjoy it, I have, um, my stuff set up here behind me, it's going to be a lot of fun, and I have a big frame and all ready, this is going to be a big painting, so I'll try and get it done in the one, if not, there'll be two videos, alright. So, bear with me. Okay, grab your stuff, let's go, and let's have a bit of fun okay, with this. Okay, here we go. Don't go anywhere. This is going to be fun. I can't wait for this. Um, there, I'm going to put the picture on your screen there, okay? Can you see that? Now, there we are. Beauty and the Beast. Um, now, obviously, the, the logo is not on it. It's just the picture itself. And you can see some lovely, kind of, a hint of some castles off in the distance. Um, some nice mist. We actually have a little bit of snow on there as well, a sprinkling of snow. So I'm going to show you how to create um, snowfall, you know, nice gentle snowfall. And we have a nice little table and uh, a nice glass full of rose. We have a lot to get into this tutorial, so I'm going to crack on, alright? I hope you don't mind. Let me tell you my colours. We have titanium white, phthalo blue, a little bit of crimson. We have some burnt umber. Some cobalt blue, which I smeared by accident earlier, but that's all right. A little cadmium red, a little cadmium yellow, and I forgot one colour, some black. Just some everyday black, any kind of black at all. Just to get really, some really, really nice darks in there. Okay, now, we may not use all of these colours, that's kind of pretty much, I mean, the red is only for the rose, and um, everything else really is just kind of a blue, white and black, isn't it? There might be a hint of pink here and there, but let's let's go and have a bit of fun with this. All right? Are we ready? Okay. Green stubby brushes after ready. I have this green stubby. Let me just check here now. That's still a little bit soft for me. Uh, this one is not too bad. I think I might go with that. Now, I was using this yesterday on a painting, so I don't know if there's still green paint left in this. I'll just dip it in my turpentine here and check because I don't want green paint all over my lovely blue painting now i just got a little tiny bit of green off of the brush there see just a little bit there's still a tiny bit of residue left in the brush so i'll give it a quick wipe and this will be overpowered by the blue anyway so i have a little drop of turpentine can you see that nice little drop this is a big canvas that was 20 inches high by 16 across and i'm doing this as a commission for someone and i said look do you mind if i do a video on this um you know, so it'd be handy. Do a commission and do a video at the same time. So let's 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 see how it goes. Let's hope it works out. Okay, I'm going to take a large brush. Now I did a very quick sketch here. All I did was the sketch of the table. Okay, a slight curve of the top of the table and the way it turns at the front, and that's it. Nothing else. So I'm going to dampen my brush now. Dip it in some turpentine, make it nice and damp. We will uh, we will use quite a bit of turpentine in this because we have a large area to cover. Okay. And up at the top, you have a nice dark blue. So let's just go right into some phthalo blue. Look at that. And then some white. Now, the white, I'm using the white just to kind of thicken it up and cover the canvas properly. If I use just blue on its own, because this is a very transparent blue and it's full of saturation. Now, it's a very, very rich color, but on its own, it will not cover the canvas properly. You'll see the grain through it. It's very transparent or color, uh, transparent color. So that's why then I add a little bit of white into it and that kind of thickens up the paint and it helps me cover the canvas much better. Whereas uh, something like, we'll say, a black or burnt umber is a very kind of opaque colour. 
so it'll kind of it'll cover the canvas very well now let me try this whoa look at that that's some blue isn't it now let's go right across and you can see now because I put that bit of turpentine into the paint see how well this is flowing for me so you can see how thin it is it's not very thick okay I have just a little turpentine and I suppose it does help if you prime the canvas I primed this canvas now just once okay just once with a very kind of watery primer and then I give it a very light rub of some fine sandpaper just like this very quickly and there we are lovely and smooth and it really does help look at this it's going right across now beautifully and it's covering the canvas because I added that little touch of white into it it's really helping so let's paint this right in here now and we're not going to be blending and all that kind of stuff you can just be very rough with your brush strokes on this so I go back into some phthalo blue because that's quite that's quite dark up in the top isn't it so let's um, let's try some black as well phthalo blue and black look at that and you see I'm just going to soften it in with the brush no need for blending in this one I don't think some black again, some phthalo blue and you see what I do then is because I have this nice kind of wet base if I'm darkening colours I don't need to add thinners okay you see I just go right into my blue and I pick up a little bit of black you see just thick paint on its own and I can go on and I can blend it on the canvas so I'm not going to mix these darks on my palette first to understand what I mean so let's bring this right down here now let's go for this lovely rich colour look at that now what I'll do at this stage is just give me a brush a quick wipe okay and I'm going to start lightening the colour a little bit more as it comes down now that's quite quite thick because I went right into some white you see and I went into some blue so this is really thick now so I need to thin this just very slightly so I'll dip the corner of my brush I'll show you look I'll dip the corner of the brush just into the top and tie just a little bit and I'll check it um, still a bit thick so I'll take another tiny drop of top and tie I think that might be okay give that a quick mix now push it right through the brush and let's try this now it feels a little bit thicker I'm, I feel like I have to drag the paint that bit more on the palette or on the canvas but it's okay you see I'm just rubbing it right through the canvas pushing it around and go right down now get everything off of your brush you see everything and pick up a bit more and you kind of know you can kind of tell yourself if it's very very difficult to kind of drag the paint across the canvas to spread it then it's just too thick then just take a little tiny drop of turpentine I'm going to start lighting it a bit more I'll take some white and I might try some cobalt this time cobalt is a lovely kind of a fresh bright colour and it's warmer and I'll take a tiny drop of turpentine again in that just a tiny drop of turps just to sort of loosen up the paint a little there you see that little tiny drop of turpentine now just loosened up that paint lovely you see how well that's going across now So we continue down here now with this lovely colour all the way down and bring this right down. Now this is I can see this kind of starting to almost soak into the canvas just that little bit and I wanted that. That's why I only primed the canvas once. Because I want that kind of um I want it to sort of soak in and that will help me later on then to get the lines on the uh, the glass and I won't have to worry about it kind of mixing too much so um yeah and also that's why they kind of put on a thinner layer of paint so it's not a very thick layer of paint it's kind of it's almost soaking into the canvas now just a little here and there you can see it um soaking in it's still wet but it just means that later on when i go to put on some details that i'm not going to end up with a big mucky kind of a painting and i find that's the mistake a lot of people make they put on too much paint too early on in the painting um, and it's very difficult to control it then you see now I have kind of basically what I want here now you can see on the photograph there's little bits of mist it's kind of a misty evening or misty night isn't it so I'm going to put a little bit of white on my brush and look just the little circles 
I am just going to sort of soften it in here and there. Very, very randomly, look, see? Very randomly. Up and down, up and down. There we go. So, that's one little bit there. And then I'll clean my brush, give it a quick wipe. Just get some of the colour off, just a little bit. Pick up a little bit of white then again, just on its own. And we we'll come over here and put another bit of mist in. And it's just simply round in circles. Round and round and round in circles, very randomly, you see? Then clean it again. Clean it each time, just to keep it nice and bright. And we'll take a bit more. And let's put a little bit down here. Now I'm going to darken, don't worry, I'm going to darken the top of the painting a little bit more. It still needs to be darker, okay? So not to worry. And well, let me see, can you see this all right, yes? Yes, it's coming across nicely. And put a little bit down here. And there's, there's a process now to this that I'm kind of, I'm thinking ahead. So I'm planning ahead here now all of the time. So and what I mean by that is, um, if you look at the photograph, you'll see there are dark castles now we see in front of this. So that's why I'm kind of putting the mist in as well. So this is kind of a nice and light background. We'll have dark castles then in front of the mist and that will show you the castles. It brings out the darkness of the castles. And then what we'll do is we'll put a little bit of mist down at the bottom of the castles as well. So what I'm trying to create, what I'm trying to explain to you is it's kind of light against dark, light against dark. And that helps to show off all the different elements in this painting. Now I'm going to leave that for now, right? What I'm going to do is, I'm going to just come up here and kind of soften all of this colour together now very slightly. Just to get rid of some of those brush strokes, okay? You see, just a little bit. I don't want all of these brush strokes on the top of the painting. I'm just going to soften them in. And the paint is kind of drying in here now, all right, in patches. I can see dry patches. Well, not dry patches, but it's soaking in kind of slightly to the canvas here and there. And that's absolutely fine. It means that I can put in my windows later without worrying too much about them mixing with the colour on the canvas. And what I might do then, just very quickly with a soft brush, very, very gently kind of just soften some of these out. Just some of them. Look, just here and there. Just a little. Very gently. I'm hardly touching the canvas now. It's like I'm holding a feather in my hand. There we go. And this is simple now. Anyone can do this. It's very, very simple. Just try it. Okay? Now, how's that? And that looks... I know that looks still quite bright um, on camera. But it's actually darker than it looks on camera. I'm going to darken the top now just a little. I will take some... Uh, let me get some... Let me get some Thalo blue, that's Thalo, it's a silent P, T-H, okay, Thalo. I'm going to take them, some Thalo blue and some black, lots of that now, look, thick paint on my brush, no thinners. And I'm going to come up here, and then now I'm going to darken it, you see. And you can see now, it's darkening much easier because I let the, kind of, I let the paint kind of set on the canvas just for a little while. You can see it's really helping. Black, a bit of blue, no thinners. Come right up there. And it's starting to rain outside. I don't know if you can hear that on camera or not, but it's, it's starting to come down outside. The rain is hitting the roof. So you might get a bit of that noise in the background. I don't know if you will hear it or not, but I hope it doesn't disturb you too much from the painting. And as I come down, I just start picking up bits of blue on its own. Just stale or blue. Keeping it nice and soft of rich, you see? And I'm going to darken it and soften it in as it comes down. And I'll keep going over this now, just to sort of blend it all together nicely. Now, how's that? That's a bit better now, isn't it? Nice and dark. We could even probably darken it a bit more, I reckon. 
let's go for lots of black now this time and let me see there that's a bit uh, stronger now isn't it and again across the top here I want that kind of nice dark feeling as it goes up the, the canvas you see now I'd say that's probably a little bit better it's difficult for me to see the top of the canvas here because as I'm looking up the canvas the lights are kind of reflecting down on the canvas so it's like a kind of a, a, a kind of a hazy sheen on the canvas so it's difficult for me to see the actual depth of the color I think that's all right we'll go with that now next next comes the fun part we have some little sprinkles of snow on the painting I don't know if you can see it or not but if you go in close enough you can see little it's like a peppering of little snow and what I'm going to do is take my fan brush okay dip it in some turpentine it's nice and wet take some white uh, now if there's a little bit of blue in this it doesn't matter it doesn't have to be pure white at all okay let's take a little touch of blue and you can see that's very watery now isn't it and what I'm going to do now I know you're going to be afraid to do this in case you ruin your painting okay that's completely understandable I was actually afraid of it as well the first time I done it but what I'll do is I'll just try it first on a piece here don't just go right on and start doing it because you, you could ruin the painting let's just take it and let's try it on this patch see how it looks okay there that looks fine I'm happy with that I'm just going to flick it very gently okay just here and there now here goes one two three ah there we go there we go and that's enough I did it maybe four times and that was it I just gave it four little tiny flicks it's just a little peppering a little tiny spray of snow that's it nothing else oh and a sigh of relief I can take a breathe now I can take a big breath oh, thanks be to God that that went alright I was hoping I wouldn't have to go on and re-edit the video afterwards but everything is fine next we have the castles okay and the brush I'm going to use for the castles is something like this a little flat or you can even use um, your small your medium stubby brush would do for this as well if it's flat you need something relatively flat okay a small flat brush and it's basically just a couple of points now I did dampen it but I dried it again okay it's just very very it's, it's almost almost dry because we have wet paint on this I'm putting just paint on its own so it will cover much better and I'm just going to basically take some blue and I'll take a little touch of black all right a lot of blue and black throughout this painting and we have a nice one here look let's just go one two three boom let's just go for it fill that in bring it down it's the top of the the point of the castle man don't be afraid and then let's pick up a touch of burnt umber and some black and on the dark side we're going to make the dark side on the right hand side okay so let's just pull some of that down on the right hand side like so and I'm going to sort of soften it kind of soften it across gently into the lighter area you see I'm kind of just softening the brush strokes across very loosely that's all very very loosely and then let me take some black and we have a little line across here don't we okay and then it tapers out again doesn't it like this now I want to keep a kind of bit of black bit of blue bit of brown some blue again and some black and it's just paint on its own it's fairly thick but because the canvas is wet I'm able to push it along you see I'm just pushing it along the canvas there we go and there we are next with this I'm going to just use the same brush now and I'm going to go into some white with a touch of blue very very light very light blue okay and I'm going to come down here on the light side 
like so and soften it in just gently again when it gets dirty just give it a rub and that's how I keep my curls nice and fresh and we'll do the same with this now we have kind of tiles on this one here don't we so let's make it more blue and just with the tip of the brush horizontally go along like that okay you see and as it goes over to the dark then it just kind of disappears into the dark color then you see understand so they're kind of capturing the light on one side and this is very very simple now just try it and have a bit of fun um, perhaps let's go for a bit of lighter let's pick up some white on its own and put in a little dot of white a bit more here see catching the light like so and all we do then to complete this, to finish this one completely, is we take a little pointy brush, get some of that light blue, and let's just define some of the edges, okay? And define the point of the tower, there. And on top of that we have a black, I don't know what you call it, it's, what do you call them things on the top of, um, castles and stuff you know little ornamental kind of things okay little piece there it kind of comes out like that like so now sit back take a look and that's one done well it's not completely done i'll show you what we're going to do as well with the pointy brush take some black and just go in here and suggest some of the slates okay see just a little bit just one line down and one across the bottom then just here and there see doesn't that just help define it just a little bit and i can see a little bit of white across the border here just to separate it and that's it i think that's that to me now is pretty much finished but what i'm then going to do is as i was saying earlier a little bit of mist at the bottom of this so I'll take a small dry brush a little bit of white and I'll go along and add a bit of mist across there look now don't go out past it too far clean your brush back into the white again and I'm going to soften this out to the area around it then you see soften it outwards I'll do the same over here And I'm very gently touching the canvas now. I'm just very, very gently touching the canvas. It's only the very tip of the brush which is touching the canvas, all right? There we go. Look at that, that's lovely. And speak lovely and softly to this now, and that'll help. And we already have, look, we have a lovely mist there now in front of the castle already. Isn't that just gorgeous? So, oh, that went well, that's a relief. I'm going to go back to my, where's my flat brush now that I was using earlier? Here it is. Back to my flat brush now and we have a couple of other castles over here. A couple of smaller ones, don't we? Let's pick up some black and some blue again. And do you know what? For this, I might just take a tiny, tiny drop of turpentine. Just a drop. Just to loosen up the paint very, very slightly. And with that dark colour now, I can see we have one or two around here, don't we? Let's go for one here. And I'm just wondering, do you want me to zoom in? Or do you want me to watch, do you want me to see the, do you want me to show you mixing? I think I'll leave it there so you can see me mixing, yes? I'm just trying to gauge whether you can kind of see right in at this or not on the camera. Because it is quite a big painting and it's quite far away. Let's put one here. And I'm going to just suggest just very kind of, very broadly, very roughly, just suggest the castle kind of turning downwards here like this. Okay? Coming straight down then. There we are. You see? Very, very spot. You know, don't be trying to get it perfect. It's not going to come out perfect. I might try a touch of crimson in this one this time. Um, another little small one here. 
and that one then turns and comes down. Let's have a bit of fun. Let's take some crimson and some blue. Pop a bit of crimson and blue into this one. Give this a bit of warmth. And we have, uh, let's take a touch of white and a touch of pink. Let's bring that across here. Join those two together. I'm just basically, do you know what I'm doing now? I'm just indicating shapes, that's all. I'm just using my imagination here and I'm just indicating some kinds of shapes off in the distance. That's all I'm doing. You see, it's very, um, it's very suggestive. That's the word I'm looking for. I'm suggesting something. Now let's go for a little bit of blue, a little bit of white, and I'll put another, um, let me see, another small one in just here. You see, they don't necessarily have to be all the very same colour. There we go. Um, take a bit of pink and a bit of blue. Just take paint on its own, that's all. All of this is just pretty much thick paint on its own. Now, we have a nice little set of castle tops. Let's call them castle tops, okay? Now I'm going to take my small brush again and, just like before, add some highlight with some white and some blue, no thinners. To each side on the left. And it's just basically kind of flick, flicking it very loosely down, that's all. See, look? And then kind of soften it into the darks as you go. And let's try this one here. I'll put in lots of very fine details then at the very, very end, okay? Um, let's come across here. I'll flick it in and let it off, you see? Flick it in and let it go. That's all I'm doing. So it's not a definite line then. It just kind of disappears into it, doesn't it? And I want to take some black. And I can see we have a little window in this one here. So I'll just come down here and give this a little window. And with some black also, I'm going to add some really dark colour to the right hand side of those. Perhaps a bit of blue as well, black and blue. And just suggest some nice dark colour down there, see? Everything here that I'm doing, I'm softening into the lighter colour, just gently. So it's not, it's not a solid brush stroke. I'm just very gently flicking the colours down, see? And I'm softening them across then a little. Understand? Now, I'm going to put in those little spires. That's the word. Aha! That's the word I was, that's the word I was looking for. A spire. Is that what they're called? Spires. On the tips of those castle tops there we go spires and make this one a little longer here and we just put a little curve in I'm just suggesting that's all see very very kind of abstracty just suggesting little bits and bobs that's the term I like to use, bits and bobs, isn't it? Now I'll take a little bit of light blue and I'll put a little highlight on the window surrounding here. Okay. And I'll take another bit and I will suggest, um, let me just, I'm kind of looking around now just for ways to make it a little interesting, that's all. A little over there, perhaps touch across there. Um, just giving it some just some interest. Bear in mind, a lot of this is going to be covered later in the painting. Okay? Now, some bright white on the left hand side of these. See a little touch. It's just catching the light coming down. And we do the same on this one here, look.
And how's that? Lovely? Coming on nicely, isn't it now? Um, okay. Little gen gentle bit of mist on this one now again. So dry your brush. And let's take some white. And put a gentle little touch of mist just along the bottom of that. Just along the bottom, say, half inch of those. And let's soften it out. I have to say now this is great fun. This is a lot of fun, this type of painting, because you can use your imagination. It's not like we're painting a landscape where there's trees and reflections and all that kind of thing. This is just completely in your imagination and you can make it whatever you like. Be spontaneous. I just know this now, I need to put a touch of white just on the spires here and there. Just for us catching some of the light perhaps from the moon and we're done okay next step next step now is these steel window frames that we have in front of all of this yes um i'm just checking the time here now on my camera i have 55 minutes left on camera here so i'm just being careful that it doesn't run out of power without me knowing so let's take um so what we do We'll take this brush here and let's dampen it and let's take some black and blue. So a nice bit of tops in this now so that it flows nicely all the way up. Lots of blue now, lots of black. Yes? And this is almost running down my palette, it's so wet. But it's not quite. Let's try it. I'm afraid. I am genuinely afraid of ruining the painting. Um, okay, I'm going to go. I think it's best sometimes just to go for it, isn't it? Right, three, two, one, go. And there we go. I'll turn the brush around now. And the easiest way to get a straight line like this, I find, it's what I've learned over the years, is to just lean right down hard on the brush all of the way. And it stays much steadier. See? Push right down as hard as you can. Oh, that's a relief. I tell you something. I tell you something. Now, let's try it again. A bit more blue. Lots of black. And let's go again. And I'll go, maybe, I'll just cut through one of these, so I'll start here. Da, da, da. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Don't make a mess. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. Turn the brush over. Okay, don't ruin it, don't ruin it. Ooh. Okay, not too bad. I'll go back over the bottom section here again, just to darken it a little bit. It doesn't matter that you go through these castles, it's completely fine. Okay, Whew. I tell you, that was a hair-raising moment for me now, it really was. And let's get some more blue and more black. I'm going to start putting in these lovely wispy shapes. Now you see, the advantage of using these flat brushes in various sizes is that like for instance this brush now is, exa is exactly the right size that i need for these bars if i push down hard for example look so if i push down hard that's exactly the right size that i need for those bars so if you're using kind of we say a bristle brush or a round brush or something it would be difficult to get that exact perfect brush stroke so that's why I kind of, I prefer using flat brushes just for that reason. And we have another one, which kind of comes down in front of this castle here, doesn't it? And it goes off to the side like that. And I must get more blue again. I tell you, we're flying through this blue tonight, aren't we? And put some blue in there now. Get some nice rich blue on these, these bars, these window bars. And we have another one. Um, now, it doesn't matter if you cut in front of these. It really doesn't matter. Let's just try. Um, 
up like that. It doesn't have to be the very same, does it? Now, as it comes further out, I'm going to darken it with some black, okay? Or, or you could pull it downwards, look with some black. And soften it in then. Just like that. Not go around up there. And we have another one. Um, we have another one actually here, don't we? Kind of comes up there like that. Like so, again, make it your own. Don't copy exactly what's there on the photograph. You can add one or two in or take one or two out. It's completely up to yourself. And then I'll come around like that. Down in front of the mist. Look at that. That's nice. And then another one. Coming down into the mist. Like so. Very nice. You can see now how simple I'm doing this. It's just single brush strokes. That's all it is, people. Single brush strokes. You don't have to be... Um, a fantastic artist to paint something like this. It all comes from inside. Now, I'm just going to come up here and go around like that, okay? And I'm going to do another one here. And it goes out of the painting then, see? And I'm going to do another one. Um, I think another one here. Coming down in front of those. Now sit back every now and again, take a fast look and see how you're getting on. That's lovely. And you see the, the advantage then of working wet into wet with this type of technique is that as you're painting it, you see, it's picking up some of the colours from underneath and it's picking up some of the whites. So it's making its own tones, this different lights and darks as you paint it. That's what I love about painting wet into wet. If this was completely on a dry canvas now, all the brush strokes would look exactly the same. It would have just one colour. But because it's picking up some of the white and some of the darks, it's pulling different colours together as it goes. That's what I love. Now I'm going to just put one down here. Like that. And pick up another bit of dark. What are we missing now? Let's have a look and see what we need. Okay, we have that on there. We have that. We have that. Okay, that side is finished, I think. Um, I think they're both finished, actually. Yeah? Okay. Next. This is the fun part now. This is where it gets fun. Okay? I'm going to take um, a round brush. A decent sized round brush look. Nothing too small. Dampen it very slightly and go to some black. Because again, you want it to flow. So just a tiny drop of turpentine to make it flow nicely. Alright? And pick up some black, some nice, what, what, some nice wet black. And then we can start creating shadows. So on the underside of these, I'm going to put some black in. Now this one goes in front of the one behind it, so I'm going to bring this one across and stop it. And then go again, like so. Now, the same down here, nice dark black. And what I'm aiming for is the thickness of half, okay? So these bars here, maybe half the thickness of those. So if you press down hard on a round brush, a nice size round brush, you should get half that thickness. Just roughly. It doesn't have to be exact, but you can see what I mean. It's easier than trying to go over it two or three times. So you can just do one simple brush stroke then, and you have it done. See? Isn't that much easier? Now, let me mix up a bit more black there. And I'm going to go on this one. I'll stop there. Continue it on. And then let's go down the back side of this. And again, remember, just lean down hard on your brush if you're worried about... If your hands are shaky, um, you know, it's... I know it's difficult if you have shaky hands. 
my hands get very shaky actually from time to time but if you lean down right down hard on the brush it'll stay straight see now let me take a look at that that's coming on nicely I'm quite happy with that and let's do the same with this so very quickly black there black on the hair I'll put black on this side here I'll put black um, along here I'll put some black under here and I'll put a little black uh, down here now done next job let's get some highlights on this little touch of phthalo blue lots of white okay plenty and plenty plenty of white lots of thick paint and just here and there little white see and what I'm doing now you see is I'm cutting in front of these castles so that now is going to push the castles way back into the distance you see watch now it's just a little here and there that's all and keep keep cleaning your brush and soften it in here and there and let's go again uh, let's put a little bit here and I'm not going all the way like I did with the black all I'm doing is a little kind of a little flick here and there see look little flick there little flick maybe here I'm lifting off then lifting off the brush nice and gently see so I'm still moving the brush e even as I lift off now as it gets up it's going to get dark or so just a little bit little bit there little there and perhaps perhaps it's a touch here look isn't that lovely it's so much fun it really is it's very rewarding just to you know grab it and just start doing it don't even worry about consequences or anything okay bit there and we'll put a nice bit here like so again I'm cleaning my brush every single time a bit there and I put a tiny bit just there now let me just curve that slightly to fix this one that's better and again just on the sides of these I'm just going to stick on a little it's just to define the edge that's all there that's one and that is two done now how's that looking isn't that nice i must say that's very 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 nice 